Uh, welcome everyone again to another lecture uh, in embryology which is about the uh, body cavities, mesenteries and diaphragm. So first of all let me remind you that during the empyreonic period uh, there is a, for what we call it trilaminar empyreonic disc. Trilaminar empyreonic disc it comes from the three layers above each other and you see here this disc or empyreonic disc forms from three layers. This, the upper one, the blue one, which is the ectoderm, and in the middle there is mesoderm, and here you can see the yellow one, the third layer, which is the endoderm. Now, from the beginning, look at this title or this sentence a tube on top of a tube. That means there is a tube on top of. A tube that means I'm about to talk about the formation of two tubes one above the other one is a neural tube one is the gut tube for the GI uh, system but let me show you here that look at the ectoderm and you know from the development of nervous system maybe that the ectoderm and especially here the neural place start to approximate each other until they united to form a neural tube that means this is a tube this is a neural tube that forms the brain and the spinal cord that's it so, because we connect the ectoderm to certain nerve system. So, this is the neural tube. On the other hand, if you look to the yellow color, and we have here the endoderm. So, this is the yolk sac. Yes, and this yellow color is the endoderm layer of embryonic um, disc. And during the formation of a neural tube, there is another tube at the same time semi, uh, simultaneously formed which is the gut tube look at look at it here it becomes like a shrink smaller and smaller until it forms the gut tube that means you have a neural tube and you have a gut tube a neural tube from ectoderm um gut tube from endo uh, there so there are two tubes above each other if you don't understand this cross section you have to remember that you have like an imperio and we take a cross uh, section so this is the neural tube here and this is the gut tube here right and here is the mesoderm in between when you take a cross section what you would see that this is you neural uh, tube and gut uh, tube although the inverse right because it depends if this is if you switch if you flip it up or down anyway so you have two tubes and in between there is a mesoderm so that means the neural tube dorsally in the back which is that form the brain and the spinal cord and in gut tube ventrally anteriorly right so that was about the ectoderm and endoderm but what about the mesoderm this layer in the middle i think you have an idea about the mesoderm that divided into three parts the most the most central one we call it paraaxial mesoderm that mainly formed the um, uh, skull and vertebrae right because it's close to the center now there is intermediate mesoderm that you know contributes to the formation of the urogenital system but laterally you have the lateral mesoderm or lateral plate of a uh, mesoderm which is you know there is a cleft in between intercellular cleft which is the uh, initiation for the division of the lateral mesoderm that means the lateral mesoderm will divide into two parts one is the uh, parietal mesoderm and one is the visceral mesoderm or what we call it somatic and splanchnic uh, uh, layers now what what does it mean what's the function what will happen to the lateral mesoderm yes the lateral uh, meso uh, 
um, derm, if you see here, it's yes, it comes from the middle here in between the ectoderm and the derm, but it uh, kind of encircles the embryo. That means it encircles the neural tube and the, the primordium of gut tube. That means it connects or holds the two tubes to each other, right? So let us start with the division of the lateral mesoderm. So what we have here, it divided into parietal mesoderm and visceral mesoderm. The visceral mesoderm runs ventrally because you know that the gut tube ventrally, right? So it runs ventrally and connected the gut tube, right? But what about the parietal mesoderm? The parietal mesoderm similarly, but it encircles the um, or overlap the ectoderm that will form, of course, the uh, perineal spinal cord here, and it forms the lateral body wall folds. That means it forms this fold and this fold that later will approximate each other, as you see here, then approximate more and more toward the midline, and at the end, they will cut the uh, 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 or cross the uh, yuck sac and adhere immediately at the midline and form what you see here the body wall, the lateral body wall of your body. That means the lateral wall of your body is formed from the parietal mesoderm that encircles the ectoderm and start to move ventrally slowly and slowly until they unite to each other. So what you have here, you have ectoderm tube, you have gut tube or neural tube and gut tube and of course uh, the now the gut tube you know covered by visceral peritoneum and the parietal Aligned uh, by the or the uh, the other one, the body wall lined by parietal mesoderm. So this is the connection between the parietal and visceral. So what will happen by this? Let me erase it and explain one thing a little bit. So we mentioned that yes this is the gut tube that's covered by visceral layer okay again this is the gut tube and it encircled by visceral mesoderm that's fine now what about the ectoderm that you know overlapped by parietal mesoderm remember parietal or somatic mesoderm so then uh, start to elongate anteriorly until they meet each other once they meet they form this cavity this cavity so this is the parietal mesoderm parietal mesoderm and here is the parietal mesoderm now connected with visceral mesoderm anyway you see that we have a cavity this is our primitive body cavity that's you know if you have this imperial here right this like an imperial so you have the a neural tube in the back right and you have the um gut tube anteriorly here right and in between look around the uh, gut tube you create like a cavity right this is the uh, primitive body cavity the cavity in your body that includes at this stage at this early stage of the imperio this cavity is not divided that means the pericardial cavity and the pleural cavity connected still to the abdominal or abdominopelvic region right that means this uh, cavity thoracic cavity with i mean pericardial cavity pleural cavities uh, connected to the abdominal pelvic cavities. This is at the early stage of the embryo. So, the primitive body, the at I mentioned the primitive body cavity, it's known as intra-embryonic serum also. 
right? Because let me explain more for you. Look at the somites here, the mesoderm, in which you have paraaxial mesoderm, you have the intermediate mesoderm, and you have the lateral plate. And we said that the lateral plate divided into parietal mesoderm and the visceral mesoderm. And this is the um, formation uh, that will form, of course, the gut tube, and this will form the neural tube. Anyway, we explain that, but this area, this area between the two mesoderm blades of mesoderm, I mean between the parietal and visceral mesoderm, this is space called intra, intra empyreonic coelom. Coelom it means cavity, right? Coelom it means cavity. The idea here, just they are trying to tell you that the intra empyreonic coelom here communicates with the extra here, the extra empyreonic serum. That means still there is a gap. Why they, they, they why am I trying to say that? Because after a while, they will disconnect it from each other, right? The connection will be lost between intra empyreonic and extra empyreonic serum or cavities. So, um, here, my friends, the imperio, you look it from the back, and what you look at this imperio, this is the rostral end, and this is the caudal end, and the imperionic body cavity, the cavity that I showed you here, this cavity along the imperio, it's like a inverted U shape, it's like that, right? It's started like that, in which there is, how can you imagine, look at this space here, and look at this space here, imagine you have this imperial here, so you go here, you go up, because it's a cross section, right, if you have imperial, right, so you have here, go through this space, I mean, and rostrally, they connected to each other, right, at the cardiogenic area, so at the cardiogenic area, area here so the intra empyreonic serum or the empyreonic body cavity it's like a horseshoe shaped cavity or inverted u shape in the cardiogenic area you see the arrows here and it has lateral uh, uh, in the cardiogenic area and lateral mesoderm because again where they where where it's located it's located here in the lateral in the uh, lateral mesoderm. So take this up all the way through the imperio, right? Because you take cross section, right? That was you see here. Then up, yes, it's connected like that. So it forms like a horseshoe shaped or inverted U shape. This is the location of this cavity in the imperio. Now at this bend here. The bend in this cavity indicates the future of the pericardial cavity. So this is the location of pericardial cavity. Look at the C-shape. And if you notice, if this is the uh, uh, pericardial cavity that will include the heart and pericardium, so it has limbs. These limbs of the cavity will form the pleural and peritoneal cavities, plural and peritoneal cavities, right? Let me erase it, and um, yes, it takes a little bit of time at the beginning until you understand the idea of the um, cavities. So look at this stage, the intra empyreonic the intra empyreonic serum connected with the extra empyreonic serum, look, right? Now, you have, you know, maybe, uh, uh, I'm sure you know that the imperio has a cranial folding. That means like that. If the imperio like this, so it's folding like craniocaudally, we call it cranial folding. And also laterally, it falls like laterally, we call it hor uh, horizontal 
folding. So during the cranial folding, once the embryo folded because of the development, rapid development of central nervous system, so the embryo like folded like that, right? And so the pericardial cavity that we mentioned here, the pericardial cavity will now shifted to be in the front here to the front yes this is very important very nice picture that shows the cavity the pri uh, the primitive body cavities look at the limb here and pericardial cavity here and this is another limb which is that was inverted u shape right so um so uh, the cranial folding of the imperio so the uh, because of that the pericardial cavity will move like that and becomes ventral to the foregut this is the foregut in the um, yellow color this is the foregut the primordium of esophagus and the stomach right so the pericardial cavity now shifted to be anterior to it because you know at the in the heart is in the front of esophagus right this is just to make sure that you remember that anyway uh this is the pericardial cavity and this is the peritoneal cavity in the abdomen the cavity of the abdomen there is a connection in between which is the limbs of the uh, cavity we call it pericardio peritoneal canal so you have here another one here they will fuse to each other later right so remember this canal this is very important which is the pericardio Beritoneal canal. This is the canal, right? So raise it so it's better view now. So the pericardio beritoneal canal just connects the pericardial to the peritoneal cavities, number one, and it passes on each side of foregut. Look at the foregut, so one on the right and one on the left, and at the same time, it lies behind the septum transversum. Septum transversum is the primordium of central tendon of diaphragm. You know that the diaphragm anteriorly here, uh, the central tendon located there, so this is the primordium, it's from mesoderm the primordium of central tendon of diaphragm. Anyway, so just we are describing the location of the uh, pericardio peritoneal canal behind the tra septum transversum, that's the future central uh, tendon of diaphragm, and between, uh, on each side of foregut, and it opens, as you see here, into the peritoneal cavity. Okay, now that was about the um, uh, cranial folding but what about the uh, uh, um, the horizontal folding on each side already I explained that but I will explain it again you remember the formation uh, of the um, lateral body wall in which the lateral or the parietal mesoderm this is let me use the root pen the parietal mesoderm here in circles or overlap the ectoderm and then start to grow ventrally right like this what you see here in the figure look at the arrows then all the way until they meet each other and close the gap and form this cavity which is the um which is the uh, pericardio peritoneal uh, canal and you know the uh, parietal mesoderm now form the body wall right form the body lateral body wall of your body but anyway inside because of this folding because of the horizontal folding a cavity the primitive body cavity formed the cavity in your body formed and here is uh, we're trying to show you this is the body cavity or as i mentioned the intra sealum. so it's uh, uh, of course the lateral body wall lined by uh, parietal mesoderm while the gut tube here lined or covered by visceral mesoderm that will be you know later the uh, peritoneum lateral peritoneum and parietal peritoneum, sorry, and visceral peritoneum.
Oh, do you think that this um, cavity that formed, or what we call it as I mentioned, uh, the uh, intraimperial exilum or uh, through the imperial, do you think the pericardioperitoneal um, uh, canal will stay like a one canal? No, indeed, there is a partitions. It will be divided uh, indeed uh, into um, uh, uh, cavities, right? In which, because we have the heart in our body, and uh, you know, in each side, you have the two lungs one on the right, one on the left, and there is a diaphragm, and you know, you have abdominal cavity that's continued uh, with the um, pelvic cavity. That means this cavity in your body should be divided, so the heart your heart should be encircled by pericardium and should be uh, insulated or isolated from the pleural cavity that contains the two lungs and you know the abdomen also the pleural the um, peritoneal cavity should be also isolated so keep this uh, uh, overview from the adult um, human body in your um, in your mind now so this cavity as a whole canal, the pericardio peritoneal canal as a whole, will be separated into pericardial cavity, a pleural cavity, and peritoneal cavity. How it started? It will be started from here through the uh, bronchial buds. Some the bronchial buds, which is the primordium of bronchi and your lungs. So the bronchi and your lungs comes from uh, there. So this part was started to uh, grow here. You can see the bronchial buds. I will use this color. So you have the bronchial buds here, one on the right and also one on the left. They start to grow laterally in which in this space, do you remember this space, the whole space? This is the... I mentioned always, I will stay repeat it. This is the pericardio peritoneal canals. Pericardio peritoneal canals. Because we mentioned that the cavity in our, in the imperial, is like inverted U shape or like uh, horseshoe shape. Anyway, so this pericardio peritoneal uh, space located one here on the right, one on the left. One on the right, you see the arrows here, one on the, on the left. So anyway, the bronchial buds start to grow on this, um, in these canals on the right and in the left, they grow more and more. And uh, what you see um, here, that there is, um, uh, once they grow, you will, you will start to see a membrane or a fold to grow medially. Yes, these, the... Uh, bronchial buds, the primordium of lungs and the bronchi, but not just they are growing in the um, in this canal in the pericardio peritoneal canal, but also we will see a pleuro pericardial folds, right? And this pleuro from its name. Now we have to separate lungs pleuro from pericardium. Right? Pleuro pericardium. Remember, above this lung buds, right? They grow above the lungs, the uh, uh, bronchial buds or the developing lung. And you have another folds, another folds that later will form the diaphragm, participate in the formation of the diaphragm here, which is um, what we call the now pleuro peritoneal. Yes, we separated the lungs from the heart now it's the time to separate the lungs from the abdomen by as i mentioned a pleuro pleuro peritoneal pleuro peritoneal that means a pleuro related to the lungs and peritoneum related to the abdomen but yes it is below the developing lung that means and uh, now it it becomes like maybe easier to understand so let us start with the first one the pleuro pericardial membrane that's between the lungs and the heart right 
so this membrane as i mentioned here it started as a, 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 a fold then it becomes like thinner and thinner until it like um, becomes like uh, a membrane so this is the pleuropericardial fold one on the right and one on the left and they start to grow medially as you see here and start to grow this year until they meet each other now um, as I mentioned they enlarge and by this way they separated the look at here before they grow like that here the plural the what you see here that the plural cavity that will include the lung is communicated look at the row with the pericardial cavity right look at it, the pleural cavity connected with pericardial cavity that means the pleural cavity that means the space for lungs that was continuous with the space for the heart this is the primordium of the heart right but with further development with further development as you see um the uh pleuropericardial folds grow more and more until they unite with each other and close it right so now the pleural cavity that includes the lung separated from the pericardial cavity that includes the um, uh, heart so um, uh, look at the i would like to pay your attention to this very important membrane the pleural uh, pericardial membrane um, yes uh, indeed it will form the pericardium but look at this future pericardium the pleural pericardium membrane it contains the phrenic nerves and veins right the common cardinal vein common cardinal veins one on the right and one on the left okay the um look at what you remember when you see the phrenic nerve here and this membrane that the pleuropericardial membrane that will uh, become the pericardium of your heart you, we know in the adult i don't know if you know or not that the phrenic nerve is located inside the pericardium on each side right that goes of course to the um diaphragm right so that's why maybe you surprised why the phrenic nerve attached to or embedded in the pericardium yes because imperiodically it's in there it's in the pleuropericardial membranes that will form the pericardium so the lungs as i mentioned just repeated expanded here and by this expansion they divided um the pleural cavity here into uh, two one form the lateral wall of your body lateral chest right and the inner layer that you see here that form the pleuropericardial membrane that becomes later the fibrous pericardium uh, yes that's interesting now look at the uh, pleuropericardial membrane now it becomes fibrous pericardium this is the fibrous pericardium what's interesting that this um, uh, membrane pleuropericardial membrane also fuses with the missing chyme just anterior to the esophagus this is the esophagus anterior to this missing chyme attached to these membrane in order to form primordial mediastinum what's the primordial mediastinum it's a word or a medical term or a term used to describe the mass of missing chyme extending from the sternum all the way to the vertebral uh, column separating the two developing lungs from each other so i would like to focus on this area so that this red color that you see here is the this one right this is the missing chyme right primordial missing uh, primordial mediastinum sorry this is the missing chyme from the primordial mediastinum yes we mentioned that the pleuropericardial membrane forms the fibrous pericardium and this is 
important now shift now shift to another um, the other membrane that I mentioned earlier that formed below the developing lungs which is to separate the uh, to separate the lungs from the abdominal cavity we call it pleuroperitoneal membrane and look at the cross section here of the imperio uh, you see here is anteriorly and here is the vertebra and that means this is posteriorly so this is the uh, 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 septum transversum now forget it for now but posteriorly uh, from the dorsolateral dorsolateral wall of the abdominal wall it arises from there and I mean the pleuroperitoneal fold attached and rises from dorsolaterally from posterior lateral surface of the abdomen internally you see and grow in that way so to separate the lungs from the abdomen um, uh, pillow so it's uh, located in the caudal end of the uh, if this is the pericardio peritoneal you remember the pericardio peritoneal canal so the volume lungs were here and there was pleuropericardial membrane and here in the caudal end of the pericardio peritoneal canal here is located the pleuropericardial membrane pleuro peritoneal membrane um, here anyway so again this is the pericardio peritoneal canals here you see here still on the one on the right and one on the left by take a cross section you will see this view anyway uh, once the lungs develop right um, up cranially and the liver also on the right side enlarged uh, the caudally, uh, this fold, I mean this fold, pleuroperitoneal fold, like becomes like a prominent and becomes these folds become like a membranous uh, shape and invaded by myoplast uh, to uh, create a kind of muscle fibers there. Now, during the sixth, uh, the sixth week, these membranes start to extend ventromedially anteriorly and medially let me use the scanner so to in order to close the pericardio peritoneal canal you see the u-shape so it should be closed right so until they got this view and fuses with or they fuse with if this is the esophagus you know there's a ventral missing chyme and posterior missing chyme or mesentery so um, the pleuroperitoneal membrane will fuse with the dorsal or the posterior mesentery of the esophagus right and also what else let us see here here is our part right so it's not just it's not just um, let me erase this so it's not just if uses with the dorsal mesentery of esophagus, but also with the septum transversum. Septum transversum, as I mentioned, will form the central tendon of the diaphragm. Now, you have a full diaphragm. Full diaphragm that separates the lungs and heart, this is the diaphragm, from the abdominal cavity, right? So... In this way, you close the pericardio peritoneal opening, and on the right, it's faster than on the left because of the developing of the liver there that pushes the membrane and uh, tightening it. Jumping quickly to the uh, mesenteries, and you know that maybe the you know maybe that the mesenteries. Uh, connects the uh, visceral organs to the body wall hanging them uh, inside that cavity and they are the root for vessels, um, nerves and uh, lymphatics they are also kind of uh, create like a partitions in the abdominal 
um, uh, cavity, for example. Now, let us start with the, you know, uh, we will talk in the future about the gut tube, foregut, I mean, uh, mid-gut and hindgut. But for now, let me show you that this is the um, uh, foregut, that's the primordium of the uh, esophagus and the stomach and the upper part of the duodenum. And here is the mid-gut that forms the small uh, mainly the small intestine uh, and uh, of course the proximal two-third of large intestine and this is the hind gut the distal one-third of intestine and to the end to the to reach the rectum so what I want to say that the for the four guts and of course I'm talking I would talk about the coda let me use this color the caudal end of the four gut that will form the stomach and the um, the stomach and the upper part of the duodenum, um, the, the caudal part of the foregut connected to the anteriorly and posteriorly, to the posterior, to the anterior and posterior abdominal um, walls by ventral and dorsal mesenteries, respectively. So, uh, what about the upper one? You know, the esophagus just posteriorly, but nothing anteriorly disappeared right so here is again you see the stomach and it's connected to the posterior um, abdominal wall by dorsal mesentery and to the anteriorly by and ventral mesentery but once you move down to the mid um, gut you will see that the mid gut and hind gut they are connected for example here is the mid gut they connected to the posterior abdominal wall by just dorsal mesentery and here is the hind gut connected by dorsal mesentery nothing like anterior because there was ventral or anterior mesentery but it disappearing right make it like this this is the abdominal cavity and you know the intestine large or small whatever they are uh, hang to the abdominal cavity connected to the posterior abdominal wall by the dorsal mesentery through which blood vessels nerves lymphatics and stabilization for the intestine uh, there so what's the mesentery the mesentery my friends is a double layer simply um, if you have for example a stomach so the mesentery is like a double layer of peritoneum that encloses the uh, or including the uh, that organ if the organ i mean mesoderm that's why it's a double layer of peritoneum enclosing mass of mesoderm connecting that organ for example here is the hind gut connected it to the posterior abdominal wall that means your intestine fixed to the posterior abdominal wall they are not accumulated above each other like this right no they are connected to the posterior abdominal wall by mesenteries right they throw which also vessels nerves lymphatics reach that organ or intestine or whatever right and indeed let me erase it and the mesentery is the location where the visceral um, uh, peritoneum and parietal peritoneum uh, continue with each other what does it mean let me show you here is for example uh, the um, hind gut one of the part of large intestine okay the organ itself the structure itself covered by visceral peritoneum because why it's called visceral peritoneum because this is a visceral organ because it covers visceral it covers visceral organ right so we call it visceral peritoneum now the visceral peritoneum now continues with at this point now the visceral peritoneum will continue as parietal peritoneum the peritoneum that lines not the visceral structures not the organs but it lines the thoracic cavity from inside we call it somatic mesoderm or parietal mesoderm 
or parietal uh, it's a parietal uh, it's a mesoderm that you know the somatic and parietal mesentery and it's composed from mesoderm of course so it's a location for connection between the parietal um, um, peritoneum this is the parietal peritoneum that lines the um, abdominal cavity for example and this is the visceral peritoneum that covers the organ itself so this is the mesentery again the point of uh, continuation between visceral and parietal guys you know that uh, the body cavity is divided of course now pleural pericardial and by the diaphragm into also abdominal or abdominal pelvic cavity now what's the story of the diaphragm already we mentioned part of it when we uh, talked about the septum transversum that was in the front of the uh, uh, foregut so you have to know this and this is very important that the diaphragm develops from four resources four empenic components first of all most anteriorly if you take a cross section through the imperial here at the level of the diaphragm you will see that most anteriorly you have the central the septum transversum the septum transversum we'll talk about each one but the septum transversum transversum form the central tendon of the diaphragm the central tendon because that the diaphragm has a central tendon and peripheral muscular uh, parts right so septum transversum and you remember uh, from the previous slides we talked about the pleuroperitoneal membrane that separates the a lungs from peritoneal cavity and they were be below the developing lung so this is posteriorly pleuroperitoneal and you have the uh, uh, dorsal mesentery of the esophagus because this is the esophagus that connected to the posterior abdominal wall by mesentery this is the posterior or the dorsal mesentery of esophagus and we have also contribution from muscular in growth lateral here from the body wall from the body wall because when the lungs develop they pushed uh, or they divided the, the body wall and it creates this kind of uh, uh, thing so septum transversum let me remind you with the septum transversum that's located between the pericardial cavity and the yolk sac with further development you will see that the septum transversum now it's in the front or ventral to the uh, foregut this is the foregut and this is the septum transversum septum transversum is a mesoderm mesoderm right it's a mesoderm uh, so again uh, it starts to grow dorsally because this is anteriorly so it starts to grow dorsally and uh, um, from the uh, ventrolateral body wall right in order to close the and form the central part of the diaphragm now um, so it forms like incomplete partition because um, between the thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity and um, it fuses which is it really needs that it fuses with the pleuroperitoneal folds posteriorly and the also the missing chyme of the ventral uh, missing chyme of the esophagus again this is the esophagus this is the ventral missing chyme or ventral mesentery and this is the dorsal uh, mesentery of the esophagus so the septum transversum fuses start to fuse with the pleuroperitoneal um, fold and the ventral missing chyme of the um, esophagus as you see so the septum transversum lastly until you know it fuses with the other components um, of the diaphragm it forms the central tendon of the diaphragm which is very important now of course i would like to say that if you read from the medical imperiology lang man's um uh, for sadler um it's a kind of another opinion or 
kind of there is a variation but in the um, uh, ultimate um, uh, uh, end of uh, uh, or ultimate development of septum transversum but of course we are following both of them and uh, in this uh, thing I I took it from the um, before we born in biology uh, Keith Moore right anyway so during the sixth week the three basic septum transversum pluriperitoneal and the mesentery, mesentery of the esophagus they close and form the um, diaphragm that separates the thoracic cavity from abdominal cavity now you know the lungs develop right and so they push the body wall and it creates a kind of part here also that will contribute to the uh, the form formation of diaphragm we call the muscular ingrowth from body wall right you see here and he is in the infant or newborn the representation of each part this is septum transversum this is unfortunately the pleuroperitoneal fold and membrane just it's underestimated here underrepresented i would say it's in the um, in the imperio yes it's large but in the infant no the story is different so pleuroperitoneal membrane form large portion in the fetal diaphragm but represents a smaller portion in the infant or newborn let us say new born right so also the big presentation here um, uh, from the body wall the peripheral muscular parts and what about the faith um, or the end of the uh, um, mesentery of esophagus yes they will form so when you say this is the esophagus and this is the mesentery so they will form the crura the crura right across and left across of the uh, diaphragm so they form the core of diaphragm that pass in front of the aorta so this is the contribution of course the central the septum transversum forms the forms the central tendon of the diaphragm so this is the uh, uh, representation of each part of the components septum transversum form the central tendon forms the central tendon pleuroperitoneal brain um, forms like a small part of the infant uh, diaphragm and the muscular part or body wall muscular ingrowth form the posterior part and the mesentery of esophagus form the diaphragm crura or crura of diaphragm now to the explain the innervation the innervation of diaphragm you know of course that the diaphragm innervated by c3 4 and 5 from cervical plexus in the neck so why the phrenic nerves passes or uh, let us say phrenic nerves pass all the way from the neck to the area between the, thor the thorax and the abdomen it's long why because the septum transversum uh, that's the major one of the major component of the diaphragm of course that forms the central tendon of the diaphragm was established in the cervical region close to the cervical somites number three four and five so somites number three four and five now from there you know there is a myoplast cells uh, myoplast moved from the somites immigrated into the uh, septum transversum and by this way the uh, they bring their nerve fibers uh, which is of course the phrenic nerve that means from the septum transversum or the diaphragm started at the cervical region 
opposite to cervical somites number three four and five and from there myoplast immigrates uh, immigrated to the um, septum transversum and carrying their nerve fibers which is would be the phrenic nerve now uh, because um, uh, the folding of the embryo and the rapid development of the central nervous system now uh, the uh, diaphragm will move from cervical region to the uh, thoracic region close to the thoracic somite right then after two weeks say after at the eighth week the dorsal end this one dorsal end of diaphragm will extend into the lumbar vertebra which is l1 that would explain that this is the correct location of diaphragm between the thoracic cavity and the abdomen right now by this way this is the phrenic nerve that um, immigrates from the cervical region, C3, 4, 5, and descends all the way with the journey of the diaphragm until it innervates it, as you see. So the phrenic nerve in it supplies or innervates all the muscle of the diaphragm, right? Plus um it carries not just the motor when you say phrenic nerve that means yes it is um, a motor nerve innervates the uh, muscles but also it carries sensation at the same time um, from the central part of the diaphragm right but what about the peripheral part of the diaphragm will the peripheral uh, region uh, which is, uh, of course, the ride from the body wall, as I explained uh, before, because of the developing lungs, push the wall and it creates a kind um, of this, and the contribution to the diaphragm. And so the innervation will be from the lower uh, intercostal nerves. Lower intercostal nerves. So sensation, yes, from the um, peripheral, the sensory fibers from the center from the phrenic nerve, while the peripheral region, the sensation will be um, uh, through the lower intercostal nerves. Now, congenital anomalies, um, when you say uh, congenital hiatal hernia, you see here that part from the stomach still up in the thoracic cavity we call it congenital hiatal hernia herniation in the um, part of the stomach up uh, to the thoracic cavity now another type of herniation called congenital diaphragmatic hernia in which the uh, in the congenital um, diaphragmatic hernia it occurs uh, when there is like occur when the diaphragm the muscle that you know separates the chest from the abdomen fails to close during the um, prenatal development so there is a gap usually this gap occurs at the posterior lateral uh, part of the diaphragm right in which that means the diaphragm you know the four components they fuse to each other but sometimes the diaphragm fails to close right and that's why uh, this opening allows like content from the abdomen i mean the stomach small intestine large intestine um, or sometimes the liver if it's on the right side to move up into the chest right and this will affect the lung and the growth of the lung look at the shrinked or hyperplastic compressed lung another Congenital anomaly, other than the diaphragm, the congenital diaphragmatic hernia, you have uh, we call it eventration of diaphragm. Eventration of diaphragm that means the uh, there is an abnormal elevation of the diaphragm. The diaphragm exists but elevated up, 
which is abnormal why because there is a defect uh, in the diaphragm itself that means it's uh, mostly it's fibrous and there is very small amount of muscle tissue in it right in which it makes it like weaker and it elevates up pushed by uh, contents of the stomach and compressed also the uh, chest and contents in the chest especially the lungs right so because of the effective musculature of the diaphragm okay um thank you uh, for listening and uh, i hope uh, you find value in it thank you